Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you both? Happy Friday. Happy Friday. <laughs> and we also say unique feel good Friday. So for today, we'll start off and ask you what has you feeling good on this Friday? Oh, what has me feeling good? This interview has me feeling good. I'm excited. Any chance I get to talk about one house, talk with my girls, I'm yes. happy. <laughs> Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much for being a part of today's show. And as founder of One House or One House Workshops, tell us about the organization and was your foundation started from personal experience? Good question. So, yes, uh, One House, we create and host workshops for youth ages 11 to 19 of divorced and separated parents. Um, we were founded on the principles of 1 Peter 5.10, okay. which is God's promises to restore us, confirm us, strengthen, strengthen us, and establish us. Um, so what that means over here at One House is um, we can go through trying times, hard times, but God promises to restore those years for us. Um, Further to that, he promises to confirm us in our true identity, um, that we are not our circumstances. Um, he also promises to strengthen us, so to give us confidence in those identities to then establish us um, in a position so that we can use our gifts to do what we're called here to do. Um, so that's kind of what I try and do for my participants as we go through our workshops to instill those values in them so they can go on to be who they're called to be. Um, and to your second point, uh, yes, it was because of my personal experiences. My parents divorced when I was 12 years old. Um, I just remember that being so hard, such a tough time. I was lonely. I was sad. Um, and I just remember always wanting a safe space to go. And also, I would look around the neighborhood we were living in at the time, I'm like, everyone's home is broken. <laughs> Does no one see what's happened in here? <laughs> like, why don't we have some place to go, you know? Um, so, of course, being 12 years old, um, it's hard to start a business. Even though we see it now, 12-year-olds are starting business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, but I had to go on and, you know, develop my story, which now I get to use to help other people. Wonderful journey. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so, Unique, in addition to your own personal experience, what are some of the behavioral patterns that you see in the teens who come from a broken home from divorce and separation? Yes. So specifically for youth ages 11 to 19, which is what one house is catered to, our Teens usually would let that um, and seek their knowledge and information from their friends and from unhealthy outlets. So I, it is my hope to kind of catch them before they go get their information and their healing from somewhere else. Um, you see things like dropping grades, um, anger, just a plethora of things that can happen. So um, I just try and be that caring adult to step in in the middle. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. And how do you um, how do you help the youth to navigate um, the different family dynamics, meaning that the parents are now divorced and the next phase is the parents are dating and eventually they're remarrying? How do you help the youth in that aspect? Well, that's a really good question. So our workshops are for our kids, um, okay. but we also have an element at the end of our workshops. And what we do is give our parents a high level overview, <laughs> a high level overview of what we learned and just the trends and things that we saw throughout the five weeks. And that we do that in hopes to create that necessary family conversation. Because our kids can't heal if our parents aren't. Like, we all have to do this together as a family. Um, so 
the parents come in just as much as the kids leave with a new community of friends who are a healthy community that allows them to continue their growth together. Our parents leave with those other parents that are that they can bounce ideas off of and just really keep it together. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. So unique. How challenging has it been for you to provide services during the pandemic uh, with separation and divorce? I can imagine that there's some challenges there as well. There has been some challenges. The biggest challenge is we have gone completely virtual. Okay. But so has everyone else. And yeah. Yeah. all of the schools, because uh, I partner with schools, churches, different youth organizations, camps, you name it. You have kids, we got you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they're trying to get in the rhythm of just this new normal right now. So we have kind of fallen back a little bit as far as offering our, well, we're still offering it, but we haven't been in the schools as much yet, um, but we plan to get back in in March once things kind of pick up and we all get used to this, this new normal. Yes. Yeah. yes. And um, you answered this in the last question because we were asking about like how the parents would be involved and the services that you provide. And have you had, um, has there been, name one happy ending for a situation, like a difficult situation with a child, a youth, a teenager that you can recall? Sure, so I had a 14 year old boy come through my workshop. He actually came through my workshop twice. Um, and he, we asked, in some of our sessions without the, throughout the five weeks, you know, how did you feel about your parents' divorce, his parents' divorce in this um, instance? And he said, betrayed. Wow. And I know, it, and it struck me, like I had never really thought and used that word. But I thought, I'm like, that makes so much sense. It's like, it's my family too. <laughs> like, yeah. like, how do you do this? Um, so I worked with him um, and his dad was so involved and so invested. Um, like I said, he came through the workshop twice and it's funny because at the end of the second workshop, he kind of pulled me to the side and he said, Unique, I'm sorry to say this, but I just don't think I need to do this anymore. And I said, that is perfect. <laughs> like this is the point to get you through this five weeks so that you feel like you can go and conquer the world and take what you learned here and take it into the next step. So I always recall that that story and it just makes me feel so good. Yeah. That's great. Uh, I'm sorry, a little bit of noise. I don't know where that's coming from. A little bit of background noise. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming from somewhere. Uh, but yeah. We were going to touch again on the fact um, we mentioned uh, the divorce and separation. Has a, has there been a in, an increase since the pandemic that you've seen? You yeah. know, you offer the services for the youth, and has there been a spike, an increase in the number of divorces or separations that has impacted your your foundation and, and what you see? Um, so I haven't seen the numbers yet, but it's expected to spike. Um, you see the stories and um, it's expected to spike. Um, and so I'm just so happy to be kind of oiling this machine so that yeah. we can get on the ground and be there because it is, it's expected to spike with Unfortunately, people having so much more time together that they're learning new things about each other that, yeah, yeah. so it's expected, yeah. but um, we're ready. <laughs> yeah, ready. And so um, I wanna also ask you, um, how open are the teenagers to receiving help, you know, while they're going through this difficult time in their life? Are they like closed off mostly? So how open are they? You know, so I've worked with kids in this setting and then I work with kids in other settings that it is not specifically geared towards divorce or separation. And I'm finding that the kids in my setting are way more open. Like I've had to pull information 
out of the other kids. But I think what I have found is once they get to my workshop, they're like, finally, yeah. it's time to talk about this. Because what you'll find with kids of divorce and separated parents is you try and fly under the radar. Like the home is already rocky. You don't want to rock the boat anymore. So you just kind of like go to yourself and close yourself off. But once they get there, it's like, okay, <laughs> let it all out. So yes, it's, it's yeah. good. It's good. Yes. We have some comments. We have Mataya um, Hogg. Um, she gives the, the care emoji that um, is pretty popular on Facebook. <laughs> and then uh, Divine Kaiser says, amen to God's promises. And then we also have Danielle Cherie. And she says, that's amazing. So happy to hear how that um, young man was impacted by the safe space yes. and healing through One House Workshop. And, and then we also have, again, Divine says, this is so powerful. So thank you. We appreciate it. It's a, it's a much needed conversation because we do yeah. have to make sure that the youth is okay. And because you um, are at the forefront of all of this as the founder, we ask you, what what is it that refuels you or what circle do you have to make sure that unique is okay as well? Uh, that is such a good question. Um, I read my Bible every single day. It's what it's the way I get started in the morning. I have to. I want to hear his instruction yes. before I go. Um, and with that, I know that I'm safe. Okay. Um, I also have a very, very good circle and community around me. Um, my community and my healing process has been so important and such is they've just been huge for me. Um, so I bounce ideas off of them. They listen to me vent. Um, and then my parents are phenomenal. <laughs> I mean, they're uh -huh. not together, but they they do it well separate and I have, you know, both of them equally. So it's been, it's been good. That's awesome. And, and also too unique. How, how many years has your organization been in existence? Yes. So we officially registered in 2018. Um, I was working or volunteering for my church's youth ministry before so i was kind of dabbling in it before but i officially registered and decided to like multiply it and put it in different organizations in 2018 so okay. about two years two and a half years beautiful and with the holiday season approaching a lot of people do volunteer and because of the pandemic we imagine that a lot of things may be done virtually and are there any um volunteer things that people can do on a virtual basis for, for one house? Um, so as far as volunteering, there aren't any opportunities open now. Um, if you'd like to, there's always, we are fundraising for seed fund, funding. So you can okay. use your resources in that way. Okay. If you like to go over to the website and donate in that way. Opportunities. Keep checking back at our, our website and definitely let you know. All right. And speaking of website, can you also, can you provide your website for the viewers? Absolutely. It is, do you want me to write it in or just say it? Can I write it in? Um, um, you can say it. Okay. So it is onehouseworkshops.com. Okay. okay. All right. Beautiful. Yep. Got it. And then also for the viewers that are watching, um, you can also follow One House Workshops on Instagram. And Unique, thank you. I want to say Unique, you have a unique. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, kind of cheesy, but it's Friday. Feel good Friday. You do have it's such good. A I love it. <laughs> yes. And thank you for, for providing your organization. Because again, yes. making sure that our youth is um, are making sure they're okay is something that's very much needed in our society. They deal with social media, they deal with a lot of peer pressure, they deal with their family home dynamic, and it's always good, you know, as far as people outside of the home 
having something set up where they could come and again be safe as one of the people that commented earlier said in the chat and we appreciate your time we appreciate the work that you're doing and for this feel good friday we we ask that you enjoy the rest of your evening and have a beautiful weekend and we look forward to having you back as a guest absolutely thank you this has been fun i've been honored to be here thank you for having me and you're wonderful thank you yes, so much you're so welcome thank you happy friday happy, happy friday, friday. <laughs>